Hot so far to start the season. The Spurs are the youngest team in the NBA. Unfortunately, they are playing like a very young team. Where are the Spurs headed? Just look at the Thunder. The second youngest, a lot further along. Last night, a great example. Take the OKC, Victor Wimbanyama. How about that move? Look at that. Round and back, a little sidestep, a little jam. Holmgren catch and shoot for three. Wimbanyama tried to make it a one possession game. He's going to see getting the mid range J to go. God, that guy's got a touch, doesn't he? For seven foot three, four or five. The Thunder rolling, though. Josh Giddy finds Holmgren for the slam. In the second half, it's an all-out storm. The Thunder putting on a clinic. Giddy drop-off dish to Chet. The shy Gilgis Alexander hits the step-back three coming up, and we had 28 points for him. Career best seven. You, you can just tell this is like, it's not going well. Here's the problem. The Spurs turned it over 24 times last night, and that's not going to get you any kind of win. OKC okay, so got the lead up to 40 at one. Final 123-87. San Antonio's now 0-2 in this in-season tournament. They're on a six-game losing streak. They get a couple of days off to rest and maybe get in a little practice and start working on quitting turning it over and get ready for a home game stand starting Friday against the Kings. They're home for four in a row now. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. The Cowboys have had some tough losses so far this season, but they've had some pretty decisive wins as well. The big wins give the chance for the young guys to get on the field and run some plays like Deuce Vaughn. In some of those early big wins, head coach Mike McCarthy wasn't happy with the drop in the fourth quarter production when those guys stepped in, but that wasn't a concern this past Sunday against the Giants. It's important for these young players to take advantage of that opportunity, these opportunities because they're so special and we've we've been so fortunate to get these young players this many reps so just really made a big emphasis at halftime that hey we got to make sure we take advantage of this and, and keep playing because you know when your time comes um, to play you know that's the expectation so and i thought our young players did a good job of that the UIW football team has had some time to look back on that November 4th loss to Nichols, which allowed the Colonels to clinch the Southland Conference title and an automatic playoff bid. That ended the Cardinals' two straight conference title streak, but all is not lost. UIW faces Houston Christian to close out the season. An important game because it has some impact on the, FC, on the FCS playoff picture. And I like last week because I thought I thought that it brought us closer together as a team. You know, God God is, uh, uses this game in a funny way to teach you about life. Um, and we gained a little bit of humility last week, um, and it brought our guys closer together. You know, we aired some things out at a football team. Uh, we talked about what's ahead of us um, and how we're going to approach it, um, and, and uh, we're going to go attack it. All right, playoffs on the field and playoffs on the court. Volleyball playoffs had a big weekend, and things will just get bigger and better as the playoffs continue. Over the weekend, the Davenport High School volleyball team advanced to the state tournament for the first time in school history. Wolves' run at the state title continues tomorrow night. Davenport faces Selena in the 4A state semifinal match. I've gotten some film on them. They're big, they're strong, they have a great offensive system so I think it's just going to be the battle of who's going to execute who's going to be coachable who's going to be able to find weaknesses and really go after them I think it really comes down to our mentality and how we hold ourselves throughout the game like next ball mentality that's what we really like to focus on I think we just need to play our game like all, focusing on like ourselves is like the biggest thing that we've like been like working towards this year because last year we kind of got all frantic but this year we're just like new mindset our game our time. It's just nice to see these young schools start to get that uh, tradition of winning going and getting into the playoffs. Good for them. Yeah. All right. It's an effect. It's an issue rather affecting public schools all across the country. We're talking about contaminated drinking water, and it's even happening in our community. We're going to take a look at why this issue is so pervasive in the next half hour. Texas lawmakers making some progress on immigration laws right now. The state house just passed a bill. It appropriates $1.5 billion to build that border wall. It'll go back to the Senate for another vote, another bill making it a crime to enter Texas illegally. That one now heads over to Governor Greg Abbott's desk for approval. Critics say it's going to cost counties millions of dollars in jail costs and lead to racial profiling in the state. But supporters say border security is going largely unchecked by the federal government, with too many undocumented migrants entering without any background check. 
Closer to home, a lot of folks worried about safety around San Antonio, and that is why San Antonio District 8 Councilman Manny Pelaez hosted a meeting last night so people could just talk about that safety and their concerns. They did a lot of talk, and District 8 residents filled the conference room at University Methodist Church on Days of Allah last night. They talked about homelessness, encampments, trash, graffiti, all that in their area. But the one thing that got the most attention was car break-ins. Being a lot of this at the rim at La Cantera more than ever before. On this side of town, more often than not, people are up here shopping and leaving their stuff in the back uh, seats. We've got a little more affluence on this side of town, and people are just leaving um, stuff that's attractive and tempting to car thieves in the back seat. So here's what Palaya stressed to those residents. Do not leave valuables in the car and don't leave belongings in plain sight. That goes for everybody in all parts of town. He also asked SAPD officers in attendance to look into the matter and see if a hotspot designation is needed in certain areas. Lead contaminated water. It's a growing concern in public schools all across the country. And part of this problem has been spotted right here in San Antonio as well. ABC News speaking to students in one district in New York. They say drinking tap water in their district's been out of the question for years. And across the country, it's unclear how widespread this problem is. Activists saying it's because there's no federal regulation requiring the majority of schools to test for lead in their water. And state requirements do vary. Fortunately, schools regulation is mostly voluntary. Mostly folks don't know what's going on uh, out of any of the taps of their schools. ABC News did reach out to school districts all over the country to ask about their drinking water. Most of them declined to comment, and some said they were part of a voluntary testing program. Others saying they plan to test soon. In the meantime, we do know that drinking contaminated water can be very dangerous. If a child is exposed to lead over a longer period of time, it can cause brain damage. As for that district in New York, it's now working on replacing its drinking fountains by the next school year. And like you, we are wondering about the safety of our drinking water at schools in the San Antonio community. KSAT Investigates team is working to get you some answers about that. Our team reached out to 23 districts across nine different counties, and we're going to have that story for you soon. Outside with live cam, this is the payoff for that brutal summer we had. This is that's what that's what I'm thinking. This is we earned this. We deserve this. Oh, there's no guilt. None at all. Uh -uh. None whatsoever. And uh, if you saw meteorologist Sarah Spivey's story yesterday about all the acorns, more this year we think than we normally see, and it has a lot to do with the stress that we've seen over the last couple of years with the drought, with the cold weather in the winters. So it is nice to have weather like this. I want to take you down to the tropics. We've got a system that's trying to develop down in the Caribbean. We showed this to you yesterday, and Hurricane Center is actually lowering the odds a little bit. Still looks really disorganized to me, uh, but it will get picked up, pushed north, and this will bring rain regardless of whether or not it develops to parts of the Caribbean, uh, but it will stay away from Texas. Our forecast here, 74 at 2 o'clock, 75 at 3 p.m. We top out at 76 today, mostly clear skies, light winds, 67 at 8 p.m. Any evening plans you have. Once the sun goes down, it does get a little cool, but not necessarily cold. And we'll start off tomorrow morning in the 50s. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Now to a new warning about a mystery illness that is affecting dogs. This case is being reported nationwide. ABC's Eva Pilgrim has more about it and what veterinarians are now recommending. Questions mounting for man's best friend after an unknown respiratory illness began affecting hundreds of dogs nationwide. There was just far more coughing dogs coming into the emergency room than in years past. While research is still underway, vets calling the illness highly contagious and in some cases fatal. Most reported symptoms are similar to those of a typical kennel cough, including coughing, sneezing, nasal and or eye discharge and lethargy. Instead of that dry cough where the dog felt good, it was now this wet cough where the dog felt sick. Idaho dog owner Wendy Brown says her three golden retrievers, Bridge, Dooley and Lulu, each started showing symptoms earlier this month. Dooley started doing kind of this huffing and also seemed to feel quite lethargic. And not too long after, Bridge began to exhibit the symptoms. 
At first, Brown thought it was just a typical kennel cough, but when the symptoms didn't go away, she knew it was something more serious. The vet started him on a 10-day cycle of doxycycline. Uh, today was day 10, and he is not a lot better. Brown says she's still in the dark as to what caused the illnesses in the first place. Experts say dogs showing any signs of consistent coughing is a good reason to get them checked out. We can ultrasound the lungs to see if there's a problem that is related to pneumonia or uh, the contagious pneumonia that seems to be going around. Unbelievable pictures. Deadly chain reaction crash on a highway in Ohio leading to an explosion. Six people, including three teenagers, died in that crash. Now investigators are looking into what caused it. Officials say five vehicles were involved. One of them was that semi truck you see right there. It slammed into a charter bus carrying a high school marching band. The NTSB has a team on the ground. They're investigating that incident. The truck company for the with that semi involved says it's cooperating with authorities. As the war between Israel and Hamas rages on, hospital now caught in the middle. Israel forces ra raided Gaza's largest hospital at the time. Hundreds of patients, including newborns, were inside. Israel views the hospital as a key target. It believes the hospital is a Hamas command post nestled under civilians. Hamas and Gaza health officials deny that. Gaza health officials say more than 11,000 Palestinians have died. Around 40 percent of them were children. And those numbers could rise as authorities think there are many more people buried under the rubble. In just a few minutes, President Joe Biden will be meeting with his Chinese counterpart in San Francisco. This meeting intended to help stabilize U.S.-China relations, but it's also potentially going to include a confrontation on several difficult issues that face these two countries. Trade, Beijing's relationship with Iran, and human rights concerns are all on the table. The leaders last spoke a year ago, and since then, the two countries have been strained by a number of incidents, including allegations that China hacked a Biden official's emails, as well as remember that incident with the Chinese spy balloon. Meanwhile, across the country on Capitol Hill, lawmakers in the House passing a bill to keep government running. Now the Senate has to act before the Friday deadline. The short-term bill would keep the government funded through early next year, but the new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, faced significant opposition from his own party before this bill was passed. 93 Republicans still voted no. Johnson's bill ended up passing with support from more Democrats than Republicans. Last month, the same move cost Kevin McCarthy his job, leading to weeks of paralysis and party infighting. Outside with Black Cam, you're talking about all the acorns, mostly because of stress. But if you ride out in the hill country, you see a lot of the smaller cedar trees. Mm -hmm. They're brown. I mean, they look flat out dead. And we don't mind yeah. that. Well, we don't like the cedar. No, we don't. But uh -huh. it's just it's, just, it's pretty, uh, pretty amazing when you look across the landscape. It is. It's been a weird last yeah. couple of years, honestly. We've had a lot of ups and downs, a lot of really cold stuff, really hot stuff, really dry stuff. And it's, it's taken its toll. It really has. 72 so far today. 50 was low this morning. I mean, this matches the average, but we'll warm a little bit above that this afternoon. The record high is 89, say back in 1951. Uh, we won't get that warm. We, have, in fact, have some cold fronts on the way that cool us down. We'll look at that forecast for you coming up. The traffic, the congestion, the overpopulation, uh, that's, that's pretty frustrating. It's growing faster than what the infrastructure can keep up with. Let's widen the roads. Let's create a little bit less confusion. Somebody is going to want to break into your car, they're going to break into it no matter what you do. They're actually a lot more common than they used to be. An older community, a younger community, growing family. You know, it's a nice place to raise a family. It's a nice place to retire. In this edition of Know My Neighborhood, we're experiencing the growing pain of Alamo Ranch. Tonight at 6.
Hey y'all, meteorologist Justin Horn here. The reason I want to do No Shave November is because cancer has affected all of us in some way. I'm doing No Shave November for the fifth year, and this year I am raising funds for the National Foundation for Cancer Research. Including myself, my uncle had passed away from cancer years ago, still something that affects our family deeply. And I'm also doing this in honor of uh, Bryce Wisdom, the Bryce Strong Foundation. Bryce, of course, being the young man who's lost his life to cancer, who inspired people across the country with his brave cancer battle. A couple of reasons why I'm participating in No Shave November 1. My father-in-law died of cancer several years back, and so that was uh, that was a tough time for the entire family. Number two is awareness, and I think that's one of the main things that we can do. A lot of times, you know, you get these guys out there, and they're all, you know, oh, I don't need to get checked out by the doctor. You need to get checked out by the doctors. Just go to the doctor, and I like to impress that upon my boys as well as they get older. If something's a little bit off, go see a doctor. Have it checked out, because most everything, and especially when it comes to a lot of cancers, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, so don't forget to go to the doctor. My grandfather passed away from cancer. My mom had a brush with cancer. It's scary stuff, and I know there's so many people out there suffering, dealing with it, and we want to help in any way we can. Yeah. Last year, we were able to raise more than $30,000. We know times are tough for so many families, but if you can, spare just an extra dollar, five dollars, donate, really change another family's life for the good. Hopefully, with the help of everybody and the donations, we will one day be able to stomp out this insidious disease. All right. If you would like to donate, just scan the QR code on your screen right now to learn more. That's just stories from folks here in the station, so you can imagine what's all through, oh, yeah. throughout San My Antonio. My father died of cancer yeah. this summer. So that's that's yeah. why we're doing it for. It affects everyone. All that. So help us out. Donate. Get on that QR code right there. Benefiting cancer research, treatment, and prevention. That's what it's all about. And the side benefit is you can make fun of your your coworkers yeah, yeah. for their scruffy well, looks. And we don't have to shave for. A month. Is it itchy? <laughs> getting Has there. It, it's gotten yeah. itchy. Yeah. I just feel like I'm getting back to normal. Yeah, Justin has uh, adopted this you know as a full-time look. You know what I found out, though? The yeah. longer it gets, it's like you start, <laughs> you start drinking. <laughs> you, start, you ever notice that? Well, yeah. you remember, yeah, you like, remember you when your great down. uncle had food in his beard? <laughs> it's like, it. You're going to be like that. Yeah, you just save it for later, David. <laughs> thank you. That's all. You know, I use a good Leftovers. <laughs> Uh, anyway, no, thank you so much to all those who have donated. We, we do truly appreciate it. Hey, I want to take you up to Canada. We always look at the uh, numbers up there to see if we're getting any big blasts of cold air. This is where they typically start. And I'm looking at the numbers. They're cold, but they're not overly cold. Uh, negative four on copper mine. Yeah, that's definitely cold. But uh, these numbers are pretty typical. Nothing here that shows me we're going to see a big push of cold air. Now, we will see some of this cold air work its way down uh, towards the middle part of next week, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. We'll, we'll feel some of it, but uh, again, nothing that uh, jumps off the page. You look across the country, these are good temperatures. It's not just us here in Texas. It's a large portion of the United States dealing with very comfortable weather, 60s all the way up to Chicago. It gets a little cooler in the higher elevations, uh, but all in all, pretty nice, including here in Texas. Right now, 50s, 60s, and 70s for the most part across the state. Cooler out across West Texas because they've had cloud cover today. But once those clouds clear, these numbers will jump up as well. We're in the 70s, and we'll make our way up into the 70s tomorrow and Friday. Saturday and Sunday, 70s too. Just a little cooler because of a weak frontal boundary. Then on Monday, we get a stronger front. And this is where we feel some of that cooler air working across the country. 59 on Tuesday, 64 on Wednesday. Those are some big travel days. It'll be cooler, but uh, not a lot of weather problems, at least here locally. Right now, 72 outside. W wind is light and variable. And as we look at the water vapor imagery, there, there's just not much going on where we are. You got to go out to the Pacific and you see a big bowling ball out here. That's your low. Right now, it's just sitting there. Eventually, it is going to move east. And as it does, it develops a storm system across the country, and that's the one that's going to pull in that cooler air and get us, honestly, some pretty good weather by Thanksgiving. So let's walk you through the forecast here. One system that's well to our north pushes a weak front through Friday. Again, no big deal. Here comes that next system, though, and by Sunday, we're starting to get humidity briefly coming back in, which could result in some clouds and maybe a shower or two. And then Monday morning, 
We'll start to see a few showers develop right along the front, but this moves through pretty quick, so our window is small here. And then on the back side of it, Monday evening into Tuesday, we'll get some cooler air, gusty winds, and this system pushes towards the east coast. Now, I will tell you, Tuesday could be a travel issue day uh, with uh, the idea that there's going to be weather up and down the east coast. Uh, but this moves north and northeast pretty quickly. So by Wednesday, it's starting to move out of the country. And then by Thanksgiving, a large portion of the United States is going to be dealing with some pretty great weather, including here in Texas. We're thinking highs in the 60s, sunny skies, cool mornings just the way we like it. Extended forecast, 77 Thursday, 78 Friday, as we said. More clouds on Sunday, small chance of rain, and only a 30% chance of rain on Monday before it turns windy and cooler. We'll be right back. Okay, brown gravy. Brown, I mean, that's, that's okay. easy. That's Let's just given. keep it. All right. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Some they've, never right to the to chase. they've never tossed to us by talking about gravy before. So. No, <laughs> and that's just gravy. <laughs> yes, indeed. Before we get to that, though, we have got a new segment today. It is called Trending Top 5. Mm -hmm. yes. And maybe those things that you uh, would could talk about around the Thanksgiving table. Like gravy. Indeed. You know, turkey brown gravy versus cream white gravy. And, of course, Cleto Rodriguez and Joanna F. Estrada. 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 My, my penmanship. <laughs> okay, I was like, I thought it was Estrada. What does that say? White gravy, brown gravy. Brown gravy all day. Okay. Okay. Brown gravy all day. Yeah, brown gravy all day. Yeah, okay. okay. Wait do you see some of the questions or hear some of the questions that we're going to be answering. She's going to be the host on <laughs> this one. That's so. right. Okay. Just wait for that. When was the last time you had Cabrito? Just like oh, Remy. This morning. <laughs> well, guess what? We're having it today. And <laughs> Chef Jaime Gonzalez from McCarrick is here. So that's what we're making, right? That is something you're going to be putting together today. But I am a brown gravy guy, too. Oh, ah, he's a brown gravy guy, okay. too. And this is just like Grammy used to make, but even at the restaurant, though, right? Yes, yeah, seven days a week. Uh, something you can find in our uh, restaurant all the time. All right. Okay. And are you ready for some amazing charcuterie? Always. Uh -huh. Okay. How about some great cheese? Willow Cheese Shop yep. is here. And, and wait till you see what they have. Yes, we are going to be doing. Oh, oh, and you can even this get looks fake. wedges of cheese. <laughs> oh, that is a great. I could it's almost take a cheese. bite out of this. I'm not going to right now. <laughs> and also, we're going to tell you about the annual youth empowerment dinner that you can attend this weekend. And I'm gesturing with cheese right now. So let me. I want to talk to you about you this. You should season. hold that during when when we do the topics. I should. <laughs> That would be a great idea. <laughs> All right, we're at 74. We'll make our way up to around 76 this afternoon. Upper 70s, rest of the work week. Pretty good weekend, although a few showers on Sunday, a few more on Monday before it turns cooler and windy by the middle part of next week. And yes, I'm with you guys, brown gravy. Although when it comes to chicken tenders, you got to have the white gravy. So yeah, but you're talking Thanksgiving, so that's fair. Yeah, fried chicken fingers, not a Thanksgiving meal they got kind of a sophisticated show today so they got they got jokes and then they got charcuterie <laughs> you said that very well thanks <laughs> it's like it's all it is, it's a cold cut plate it's a fancy way <laughs> a fancy. Of, of saying meat and cheese meat and cheese on a platter <laughs> That's a life start today. now celebrate san antonio coming to you live from historic market square this is sa live <clears throat> oh, hello and Ooh. happy Wednesday. Oh, yes, we are on the final stretch to Thanksgiving dinner. Good afternoon. I'm Fiona Gorstiza. I was going to say, one week from today, Thanksgiving Eve, I if you can believe. I can always so. count on you for keeping track. I know, I know. And I'm like, <laughs> Oster Hage. All right. As, well, David and Ursula were just kind of talking about, it's the great gravy question. Is it the white gravy or is it the brown turkey gravy? Mm -hmm. What do you pick? What's the score? Oh, everybody's going for the... Brown uh, gravy. Yeah, of course. With Thanksgiving, yeah. you can't have that. But like he said, with chicken fingers, oh, chicken boy. fried steak, you do the white gravy. Yes. Sausage gravy. I know, but if you had to pick I one. Know. Brown gravy. Okay, there we go. All right, now we can move on. So please <laughs> scan that QR code and weigh in. All right, well, as you saw, just a seven-day forecast, the weather's going to get uh, very cold next week, and so you need something to warm you up, and boy, do we have it here. Jaime Gonzalez, chef and general manager at Karaki, is here to show us what's on the menu this season and how they can help you with your Thanksgiving meal. First. All right. White gravy, brown gravy? Uh, I am brown gravy as well. Okay, for Thanksgiving. Uh, you got to have the drippings from the turkey, make your own gravy. Um, 
much more flavorful and accompany me the turkey and anything else. Okay, okay. good. We're all on the same island. That's all great. right. Thanks very much. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but we are not doing anything really that you would think of for Thanksgiving today because we are making a stew, like a stew. Yes. Uh, but what kind? Uh, a stewed cabrito. Um, so traditionally, the cabrito for us, we do in these underground pits in the restaurant. They're wrapped in banana leaves. Uh, laid over is some agave uh, that we drop under these pits um, for about 24 hours. We pull it out of the ground. We capture all the juices from it, mm -hmm. like a consomme uh -huh. uh, that you could dip your tortilla into. But for this warm, for this cold weather, something to warm you up would be this cabrito uh, that's been stewed for 24 hours, accompanied with uh, some nice garnish and refreshing cilantro. This and for those who don't so know, good. what is cabrito? Cabrito is a goat. Uh, it is a baby goat. Um, something that we, I only seen as a kid in special occasions. So, so something like a wedding or a quinceañera, uh, two or three goats would be uh, put in the ground um, to later be enjoyed by the entire family. So almost like a celebration. And you say at your restaurant, it is above ground pits, right? Yeah, so they're, they're raised above the ground, but we cook these in a underground pit that goes about six feet under um, that are you know, custom made from us from mill scale. Uh, it is something that we really treasure and try to keep some of these traditions alive of actually doing it how they were done a long time ago, prehistoric. It's about as close to being in ground as you can as far as a restaurant absolutely <laughs> can yes. go, right? Absolutely. Okay, okay, and then some of the other garnishes that we put on here are? A little bit of radish. All right. uh, we also have some fresh um, lime in there, mm -hmm. cilantro, and some onions. Okay, do you want that one and I've got this one? or? Oh, you got what, what, what one? Oh, yes. Yes, okay. I got one okay. over here, yes. too. So, All right, so what else is on the menu? Can we just start with, with, with yeah. what's here, So please? we also, going into the holidays, something <laughs> that we want to showcase is also we're in Texas, so Texas pecan pie. Uh, these pecans that are on top here are actually infused um, candied pecans uh, that we do in bourbon. Uh, we also did a bourbon pumpkin cheesecake here. That's something that um, I picked up from a good chef of mine, a mentor, uh, that passed this recipe along to me and is probably one of my favorites ever since, especially going into Thanksgiving where you feel like very, very homey. Well, I like the common denominator, bourbon. <laughs> there's nothing I don't like about well, everything you just said. But I mean, I've heard of <laughs> bourbon pecan before, but bourbon in the pumpkin? Yes. Why, I mean, why, why not? Why not, Mike? <laughs> Don't okay. judge. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not judging. Not I'm one of those that would take the pumpkin pie and the cheesecake and put them together. So when I found out about something like this, it was probably one of my favorite and I would cherish forever. Okay. And by the way, this is delicious. I mean, you said this is more, like you said, the old fashioned way. Instead of like the birria, things like that, it become mm -hmm. more kind of fashionable these yeah, days. Yeah, trendy. Right? Mm -hmm. um, this is just more home. Traditional. Yeah, traditional. Then, okay. And so if someone wants to order for Thanksgiving, what do they need to know? Uh, you can go online for mm -hmm. our, these offerings. We have them already mm -hmm. online for um, available mm -hmm. offerings. Their last day for um, ordering would be uh, Monday the 20th, mm -hmm. uh, which will be also pick up on the 22nd. Okay. And you have a happy hour too, right? Oh, our happy hour has just launched so mm -hmm. we do happy hour from 4 uh, in p.m. to a close of the restaurant and that is every day 4 p.m. to close yes all right sweet on the, <laughs> on the patio on the patio that's we fine and by the way, <laughs> you, can me any, you can put me on the roof for happy hour it's okay <laughs> and by the way if you're wondering where it is remember where liberty bar used to be well that's liberty bar has become now this restaurant right there at the corner of josephine and the the exit Joseph, ramp yes so if you we're on 239 east grayson uh we are to the Park. pearl um so we are right in the corner okay. all right Thank you very much, sir. For more information on Karaki, just snap that QR code on your screen or head to our website, essaylive.com, and click on the ask scene on SA Live tab. All right, did you know that the largest Christmas display in the state of Texas is right here in San Antonio? I do now, Mike. You Thank do, you. don't you? <laughs> okay, I went to check it out at SeaWorld uh, and went to see what they have in store for the holiday season. See the snowflakes fall. the season for family memories and why not make them right here at SeaWorld San Antonio where they have been decking the halls or outdoor halls I should say for this bigger than Texas wintry celebration and joining me is Alex Esquivel public relations specialist look at you so festive <laughs> absolutely <laughs> tis the season Fiona as you said we're here at Texas's biggest Christmas celebration and largest light display at SeaWorld San Antonio's Christmas celebration we have millions of lights festive entertainment and delicious culinary offerings for everyone to enjoy 
And that's the thing is that when you come here, you can really get into the Christmas and the holiday spirit. I don't know how many lights there are, but there are endless possibilities for selfies and Instagrammable moments <laughs> and a fabulous show for the second year in a row, right? Absolutely. So first of all, Christmas celebration is happening everywhere. We have specialty themed areas. We have pathway shows, including our Merry Mariachis to where they sing traditional Christmas music, but with the little Fiesta twist, it's one of my favorites. We also have other pathway singers like country singers in one of our specialty themed areas called Christmas Market. It's like a tech Texas Christmas, we have Christmas Santa, we have a cowboy boots tree, it's amazing. On top of that, you had mentioned the Oh Wondrous Night show. So this is an award-winning show. It's a live action performance with amazing puppetry, live animals, and just over 30 inspirational characters that are so inspiring. It truly is magical to see. Yes. And right now there is a special going on if folks want to visit the park all year long, right? Yes, so right now we're in our Black Friday sale to where guests can actually buy a pass and get one 50% off. So you're gonna have to take advantage of the discounts we have going on right now so you can come and enjoy the Christmas celebration with us. Okay, you mentioned Santa Claus. He's here, he's here, he's here, he's here, okay. <laughs> and they can make those memories too, right? Absolutely, so we have our friends from the North Pole, including Santa, Mrs. Claus, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Clarice. We have so many friends that are here to join us and you can meet them in special photo opportunities that are here around the park. All right, and I have a little one that loves coming here, okay? And she especially loves the parade. So what's going on with those for kids? Yes, so we have a Sesame Street Christmas parade and we have a new Jingle Around the Block party to where guests can meet some of their favorite Sesame Street characters, including Elmo, Oscar the Grouch, and so much more. And all the fabulous rides and animal encounters that folks can sign up for, right? Absolutely, so all of this Christmas celebration is included at your park admission, and it also comes with the amazing rides and our wonderful animals to where you can see them at our amazing animal presentations or our up close encounters to where you can meet belugas, dolphins, sea lions, lots to see here at SeaWorld and even hot chocolate. You're gonna find that here too, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Guests can actually purchase lanyards to where they can punch their card all throughout the park and create their own Christmas menu uh, for the night. I love it. All right, tell folks where they can go for more information. For more information, you can go on SeaWorldSanAntonio.com to learn more. All right. Thank you so much and enjoy SeaWorld's Christmas celebration. For more information, you heard her, go to SeaWorldSanAntonio.com. And get ready to weigh in because you have an opportunity to win a family four pack of tickets. That's right. Just click on the story on our website, salive.com, and you can enter to win a family four pack of tickets. All right, still ahead on SA Live, it's the Alamo City's first shop dedicated to cheese. We meet this mother daughter team and check out some of more uh, some of their more than 100 cheeses but first who doesn't love thanksgiving sides but would you love them in savory chocolate form like jalapeno mac and cheese chocolate take out your phones right now scan the qr code on your screen and weigh in because and get we, ready to weigh in yes get ready to weigh in because we are going to have a conversation we're going to get it started we're talking about that and other trendy topics we want to hear from you it's next on sa live <laughs> 